continue in our conversation on the means of grace by coming to a most fundamental work of mercy. That many think there is only just the works of piety that we talk about as the means of grace in this life, such as fasting, the Lord's Prayer, and many other works that focus on the individual nature of our relationship with God. But it could be no farther from the truth for while these are profitable in our works with God, we know that they are not the end of our work with God. If we are to have the true fullness of the means of grace, we also need to move in the ordinances of the means and works of mercy, where we reach out to those who are in need, where we attribute the works of justice and truth in this life to have their means. I myself have helped since my days in Oxford to bring about the works of mercy in this life, visiting those who are in prison, the poor, the starving, setting up orphanages for those children who have no home, reaching out to the widows and providing them assistance as I am able. In these ways, we as Methodists attend to the works of mercy, knowing that the fullness comes in the combination of piety and mercy. And that with this single eye, this holy eye that we look for, this light of the world, we can attend to mercy. For without it, while we are profited by the works of piety, we know we are not achieving the fullness of mercy. And you two here have been attending to the works of mercy. I see just down the way that you have a home for children here in Owensboro. And I've heard tell about other homes across your state that you have set up for the work of attributing to the least and the last of this life owning to that movement of God within us that calls us forward into the world, this social holiness that we take so dear in our works together. Not only have you been working with the children in your community, but I hear you're also attending to the works of those who have been displaced by disasters. The tornadoes that struck through Kentucky this past year coming all the way south here of Owensboro. I have heard story after story of churches in your conference and from beyond that have bound together in the love of God to reach out to those who have lost utterly everything. This inherently is the means of grace at work and the works of mercy we are called to. Whether in the ordinary times or in the times that come to us in the midst of great disaster and sorrow, we know that we can rely upon the church and especially those called Methodists to be the hands and feet and do the works of mercy called to us by Christ in this life.